everyone and welcome back to another video. It's Brianna Ray from BriIY here to bring you a, a wood cutting video, really. Um, so I saw this really cool design for um, like a, a minimalist caricature, I guess is the best way I can describe it on Etsy of the MC from Cabaret. And as many of you may or may not know, I do participate in a lot of local uh, theater and I'm currently in Cabaret, and I thought, especially since we were doing the show around Christmas, it would be wonderful if I was able to create something a little special for our MC and create a similar style item, uh, but modeled after him. So uh, as simply as I put it, I just kind of created these like organic shapes that imitated uh, the, the shape of his face, his hair and beard, and his lips. Um, and I made the outline just like a little bit bigger. And I saved all of these as separate uh, files. So I would like would remove the skin colored one, and then I uh, would remove the, the lips, and then I would have like my black shape. And I would use those to cut out all of my uh, individual shapes. I actually believe I kept the black and the red together because they were separate enough. Uh, and I just had my wood cutter uh, do its job, do its thing, and uh, cut everything out for me. It was like a super simple process. I can break down uh, how I did the shapes a little bit more so, but I feel like uh, if you've seen my, uh, you know, tracing video uh, that I've done before for creating digital portraits, this is a pretty, pretty easy process. And so what I'm doing now is now that I have my wood uh, pieces cut out, I'm going around with a sanding tool and I'm going to be cleaning up any of the edges. Um, it looked like it didn't go all the way through when I was doing the lips and the uh, beard area here. So I'm making sure that there's nothing sharp or crazy going on here. I'm also going to be uh, squirting my paint directly onto the wood so that I know uh, how much I have slash need. Uh, I prefer doing things this way, especially if everything's going to be one solid color. Um, you know, if I don't have to dirty a palette and then rinse more paint down the sink, uh, all the better for me. I actually uh, read a hack pretty recently about uh, acrylic paint since they dry so plasticky. If it's thick enough, I could just peel it off and throw it away. Um, but again, I'm trying not to waste as much paint as, as I possibly can. Uh, technically, uh, my friend here that played the MC is definitely not a... a fully uh, black haired individual. It's very like dark brown, uh, but I thought the black and the red was a really great color combination for Cabaret. Uh, if you're not familiar with the show, basically it's a show about, you know, a Kit Kat club in Germany, specifically in Berlin, uh, right at the rise of the Nazi party. So it has a lot of really fun uh, choreography numbers and then a lot of not so fun, really dark scenes. Uh, if you've never seen Cabaret before, uh, Liza Minnelli starred in it. Um, I am one of the Kit Kat girls. I was also Sally's under understudy for this uh, particular production. So I had a lot of fun with it. It was a good time and I mean, almost as good of a time as I'm having uh, painting everything with reckless abandon here and all of my uh, black streaks and everything everywhere. Um, but this was a, a fairly easy process um, and I do want to make sure that I go around it and get all of my edges as much as possible. But because uh, my friend is definitely of the uh, paler complexion, especially the MC is usually kind of depicted with like a very, um, a very light skin tone. I'm actually going to leave the wood its natural color because it, it matches uh, his skin tone relatively well. You can also see him going around and kind of texturing a little bit to kind of let the strokes of the paint lay in the way the hair would lay. I don't know if this is actually gonna do anything or even be remotely visible, uh, but it was just kind of a little, a little extra something I wanted to add. And of course now cleaning up all of my mess while everything is still wet. Um, that way it doesn't totally ruin my table. Um, what's nice about acrylic too is it's super easy to kind of chip off after the fact. So not, a, not such a bad idea. Also, if I haven't mentioned it already, if you don't actually know how I, I did all of my wood cutting, um, I do have some, uh, like a brief introduction to the first time I ever used my laser cutter. I'm gonna talk about my settings a little bit more in depth in another video. I'm gonna uh, try my puzzle again um, after my last fail, but I love this laser cutter. It's actually probably the coolest tool I own, like outside of my Cricut. It is probably my most used. As you can see, the lips are super tiny here, and I'm gonna go with a really dark red. I believe this is called Tuscan Red. Um, just like a couple of drops here to add this uh, red color and kind of cover up some of the, the darkness on the edging. I also, as you can see, have done just like, an incredible job of maintaining um, the frame uh, of this shot the entire time. I don't know why this color, I didn't expect it to be as streaky as it was, but here you can see again, I'm kind of coming around those edges. I suppose it doesn't fully matter um, because it is pretty dark on the outside. It looks relatively finished. I think it mattered for me on the lips though, just because that one part that I had to sand down uh, right where my thumb's covering. 
Uh, like I said, I was going to leave this uh, back part blank. I also cut out um, the words Willkommen, Bienvenue, Welcome, which are the opening uh, lines of the show. Uh, the opening number is called Willkommen, which, as you can imagine, translates to welcome. Um, I've also found uh, more and more regularly, I don't know how I got away with um, <laughs> what I'd gotten away with for so so long, which was uh, just cutting things and not really worrying about if it was warped or if it was straight or anything. Uh, evidently, uh, I had that my first experience with that uh, this time around when I started experiencing, um, you know, warped paper and then obviously my things would be cut unevenly. Um, I also did this, I learned how to do uh, like the engraving on leather. I did like these leather bags for two of my friends who are moving to New York next year. Um, just like toiletry bags for them and i guess i didn't flatten it out fully and it just, it just turned out kind of ugly and at one point it actually straight up cut a hole through it which sucked because i i had obviously only those particular blanks i didn't have new ones so i just kind of reinforced the hole a little bit and and hoped for the best but um i had to kind of go through this one as you saw with my oh no i snapped it i forgot i did that <laughs> Um, just with my box cutter to kind of even things out. I do, I, I'm gonna glue everything together at the end here. Uh, spoiler alert. So, um, it did, everything turned out okay. I'm just kind of sanding it off so that it was, uh, relatively easy to put together. It's still hanging on by a thread there, it looks like, in this particular clip. Um, and I'm just gonna go through and uh, start popping out all of the rest of my letters here. Some were definitely easier than others. Uh, I think it, this particular piece of wood was warped more in the middle. Uh, so like the bottom of Vilcomen like was not fully cut out, but the top of Bienvenue and the bottom of Bienvenue was. And as you can see, Welcome, welcome is just popping right out with, with zero issues whatsoever. For some of these little pieces, I do like to use like my Cricut weeding tools to just kind of pop them out. Um, in this case here, I'm using just my box cutter, but the weeding tool I even think is better because it's pokier. There we go. So I'm just kind of stabbing out the insides of my E. Um, I believe I ended up not keeping the dots on the eyes. I went back and forth with a couple of different things I wanted to try here. Um, like with dotting the eye with paint, I tried like rhinestones or whatever, and then I thought it was maybe a touch too, too feminine. I was definitely going for something very like, um, you know, gender neutral, if you will. Um, the MC is a, is a relatively um, androgynous character, so I did kind of want to keep a little bit of that essence uh, in what I was creating here today. There goes all of my letters just popping right out, nice and convenient. And I think I wanted these, um, I was considering putting these in black, but you know, why not have that little extra pop of red? And again, trying to save on the paint palettes, I just kind of popped a little bit in the uh, the cap there and just uh, dry brushed it over top of my letters uh, so that it wasn't uh, too wet and would dry relatively quickly. I do believe that this is a satin finish and for some reason as I'm watching this clip back, I'm like, wow, that looks so much like glossier than I anticipated, but I think it's obviously just because it's not dry yet. Yeah, I had a really good time doing this show. Um, I definitely love really dance heavy shows. I love, um, you know, getting to do like really big like production numbers. Um, and what's really great about Cabaret for me is that it's like just the perfect mixture of really like serious, um, meaningful theater and also like very campy, which I think I'm very good at. Um, is personally so this was definitely my kind of show it's actually the first show that i ever saw live so i have quite an attachment to it so i mean even outside of wanting to create you know christmas presents for my friends at this this point i did really um i do have a strong attachment to cabaret the alan cummings version of the mc is always kind of who i imagine when i think of this and obviously the version that i found on etsy that kind of inspired this look um is a little bit more of like clownish if you will uh but it was a really cool idea and, you know, especially if you have the means to create something like this, it came together pretty quickly and I'm definitely a fan of, of the overall product. So here is where we're finally going to start to put everything together. Ooh, zooming out, zooming in. Yikes. Um, so I've got everything kind of put together here. I've got my, my face, uh, again, just slightly bigger than the outside of the hair actually is. That way I had a very solid base on which to glue everything that I needed to glue. I'm just using this craft glue that I had from the Dollar Tree. It's uh, a clear glue, I believe a PVA glue, uh, and it works pretty great. I haven't had any issues with it yet. Um, so I'm just gonna pop all this around the background, or I guess rather around the edges, because I definitely don't want the edges popping up. 
um, and kind of scribbling it a little bit. This is like the worst clip ever because uh, you really kind of can't see anything, but also you can. I don't know why I didn't hyperlapse through the gluing process specifically, uh, but hopefully this is a nice, uh, I don't know, it's a nice opportunity for us to kind of get to talk. It's an easy project um, with some more, I guess, complicated methods like um, the tracing with Procreate or the um, using the, the wood cutting tools. Uh, that I've already explained in some bigger videos is kind of a like a simple project, but definitely um, one I wanted to share because I was really proud of this result. Just brushing everything nice and flat. Um, and yeah, since we have some some time here, I thought maybe this is a good opportunity to just tell you guys a little bit more about myself and, and the things I like. Almost uh, like a is this like a get ready with me? Is this the art version of a get ready with me? I don't know. Um, anyway, making sure I'm getting into all the edges and all the inner parts because uh, I will be turning this into a wall hanging, specifically like a door hanging. Obviously it says welcome on it, so it's like a perfect welcome sign. Um, and I'm just going to stick this down, of course, making sure that it is placed approximately where I want it. This uh, glue does have a little bit of give with it, um, but with that really thin layer, it is gonna dry a little bit faster. So I kind of want to work relatively quickly. And of course, adding my words and my lips. Probably should have done a second coat on those lips. Not looking so perfect, but in the end, this is uh, this is really how it turned out. I very simply just drilled some super tiny holes in there, added some jump rings and some chains so that it can hang up, and I think it turned out really great. I didn't end up uh, keeping the rhinestones. Like I said, I wanted to keep that kind of more simple matte kind of texture about it. Um, I don't know if I regret that choice or not. I think maybe studs would have been cool. I just obviously didn't have them. Uh, the jump rings worked out pretty well. I had this chain left over from, from another project. Um, yeah, everything worked out great here. It was super easy. It came together with things I already had in the house and I'm pretty proud of it. So I don't know, let me know your thoughts. If you like what you saw, feel free to like and subscribe. I do put out new videos every Sunday at noon Eastern Standard Time and I would love for you to be here for the next one. Thanks again so, so much and I hope to see you then. Bye.